So hi guys, this is Rogsim087 bringing you an unusual video today. Uh, this will be about how to decrease the weight of your trigger pull or make your trigger pull lighter. Now, I've been holding back on this video for a very long time because I myself am not really a techie person. I mostly keep to myself. But a lot of you guys heard me mentioning it in some videos and some of you have even seen my Glocks or tried it and started asking me how I do it. Uh, so I'm making this video to give you guys an idea about how it works and how I do it for my own Glocks. But first, I need you guys to understand a couple of things. So one, for all you Glock experts out there, all you guys who do your own teching, you will notice that in this video, that I do my modifications very differently relative to the way professionals or IPSC shooters do it, uh, or how they tune their own Glock triggers. It's because, um, I don't know, um, you, you'll see why once you actually meet one of those people. I'm very well aware that my methods are very, very different. But this is the best I can do. If you have a better way, please feel free to show... Um, to mention how or correct me if I'm wrong, okay? And the second thing I want you guys to understand is that you must watch the problem section after because a lot of people screwed this up. A lot of people attempted to do this on their own and screwed up, so you must be aware of the risks, especially if your Glock is the only sidearm you have and if you can't get parts easily because you live in an odd place. So anyways, on with our video. So right now, I have a Marie Glock here that does not belong to me. It belongs to a friend of mine who busted his sear. Uh, which is why he decided to leave his Glock with me to tune up with no aftermarket parts because um, he wanted to keep most of it stock. Um, almost everything is stock actually, except with the valve knocker, hammer spring, recoil spring, and recoil guide rod. Other than that, um, really, there are no aftermarket stuff in here. It's actually like very, very plain, very, very simple. Um, he got this primarily because it's SAI and it's uh, he wanted a longer barrel. Okay, I didn't, I didn't do much touch-up work, okay? He, he primarily gave it to me just to make sure it worked. Um, because he was having some cycling issues and uh, sometimes it didn't lock back, sometimes it was light striking, so I solved all those issues already. The only thing we have to pay attention here is the trigger, okay? So first, uh, before we start taking out, uh, apart the Glock and showing you guys how I do it, uh, you have to do a couple of things to make sure uh, before you do this, otherwise it's sort of pointless. So the very first thing you have to do is your Glock must be functional. You, your slide must be able to move normally and um, because this is very important later for the uh, trigger reset test and dry fire test, okay? And just to quickly show you, I think this is charged up. No, there's a little bit of gas. Let's see if it works. Okay? So let's just give you an idea. By the way, the guy insis insisted to have his uh, trigger, uh, his safety out because when you put it on the table and if you have your safety tucked all the way back, it looks a little weird. Okay, so he wanted it to stick out so you can see it. Okay, that's just an aesthetic thing. So anyways, that's the first thing I want you guys to note. Uh, the second thing I want you guys to note is that your Glock must be clean of goop. Um, this guy, for a particular reason, had a lot of oil from all the stuff wearing down and a lot of dirt mixed into his mechanisms. I have no idea why. He must have never cleaned it. Uh, and then the third, you need a clean sear. A clean sear means that the sear nub is perfectly clean. I'll, I'll let you know about that later. Fourth, I recommend you get an aftermarket trigger, like a guns modified trigger, a ready fire trigger, a thunder trigger, or an ace one arms trigger. Uh, the reason why is because um, after you remove the take up, the take up is sort of like the the, the pre-travel or whatever you like to call it um, if you're in US I think they like to call it pre-travel or take up um, if after you get rid of that it's much easier for you to feel how heavy your trigger actually is so you don't have to take it up and do all that feeling okay it's not a must but I recommend you do it okay so let's take apart the Glock you may hear me talk a lot sorry about that Okay, so uh, stock blowback housing unit, that's still the very, very heavy one. You know, his uh, iron metal iron says it came with this airsoft surgeon slide. Uh, stock Tokyo Marine nozzle, stock internals, uh, stock everything. Uh, only his barrel and maple leaf rubber has been swapped out. He has a PDI barrel, you know, for the longer barrel. Okay. So first, let's start taking stuff apart. Now, the guy chose to have stock parts um, in his guns because uh, there there wasn't really any problem. Really, it's just that um, it wasn't it just wasn't functioning at the time because um, whoever tuned it before uh, put a very very weird hammer spring in it, and it wasn't 
uh, doing the right job. And he owned this Glock for over a year. So his sear uh, was, um, and he used, and this is pretty much his primary sidearm. So he, he completely weared out his, his sear back then. there no get off oh by the way you know what just occurred to me um this is actually a very good way for people who like if you broke your sear over time because you've been using your glock a lot this is a good way to recycle your sear uh, because sometimes when the sear nub uh, gets bust up Sometimes it is just barely enough for you to turn it into something that can work. Sometimes. It, not always. Um, you'll see what I mean later. Now, let's pop this rear off. So just put that all aside so we don't lose track of it. Okay. Now the primary parts that we have to look at now is the trigger and uh, his hammer stuff. Okay. Uh, so first of all, when I said that you need aftermarket trigger, um, you notice that the Ace One Arms has a has his grub screw at the front. Um, all the other triggers like a like this, like a guns modified trigger, uh, the trigger tends to have the screw underneath here. Okay. Can you see it? Oh wait, sorry. The hole to adjust it is in there, okay? Before the Ace-1 arms is at the front. Um, and I'll explain why this is um, a better choice later. So let's just take this apart and uh, start showing you how. It's very, very simple, okay? So don't worry, I won't talk too much. As you can tell, all this stuff is very, very old. Okay, so that's all his stuff. Okay, stock hammer. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't change. I didn't change his valve knocker. Sorry, didn't change it. Sorry. Oh yeah, that's the other pistol. Sorry, my bad. Okay, so so as you can see right here, it is a stock Tokyo Murray valve knocker. It has a 17 on it. Can you see? Right there, stock Tokyo Murray valve knocker, uh, stock hammer, uh, upgraded hammer spring, and the sear. Okay, so the most important thing on how you actually lighten your trigger pull is these two parts. These two parts are the most important parts. Okay. Now, a one. If your if your trigger was if your trigger if your Glock was already working before, right? Uh, that's where you start. If not, if you had a trigger issue before, this will this will not work for you. Okay. So uh, one, you don't need an aftermarket trigger bar. You can just use whatever you have. And you see here that contacts this area. What you have to do is basically take a file like this and increase the slope of the sear okay now why does that decrease your trigger pull now the reason why is because it actually sort of slip um when it, let's say if it was a wall okay if it was a wall like this like um like a wall like a re like a rectangular wall what it does is that it will hold on to it and then the, it applies pressure and that's why that creates a heavier trigger pull okay as opposed to if you have a slip, if you have an angle, what happens is that as as the trigger bar slips down, it's actually just enough to disengage it from the hammer, okay? And it's and that slipping effect is the reason why when you lighten your trigger pull, an other side effect of it is that your trigger will feel more like a slip, okay? Now let me demonstrate what I mean, what you mean by that. Okay, now this trigger has, uh, has that done to it already with a guns modified sear. Okay. Now, when I pull the trigger, what happens is that if you're using stock Tokyo Murray parts, and let's say you buy a guns modified trigger, and you take and you remove the take up, meaning there's no slack. Okay, mine has a little bit of slack. Okay, and then what happens is when you pull the trigger, it'll feel like a, a very very clear wall. You pull it and then it breaks, but it's a very very hard wall. 
Now, once you do this upgrade, once you do this upgrade with the sear, what it does is that, watch very carefully. Now, when I reach this point, this actually already feels like a wall. Right now, this already feels like the wall right here, okay? And then when I pull the trigger very slowly, it slips a bit, okay? So when you actually do this modification, the side effect is that your trigger will feel like a slip, a very, very smooth slip, okay? Now, here's where when I do things differently relative to the people, is that if you're an IPSC shooter, if you're a professional, you probably notice that my trigger is not as crisp and not as smooth as yours. The reason why is because I can't polish it enough to do that. If I polish it too much, I start to get problems. So that's the only reason why I only stick to file and sear. That is the only reason why, okay? I'm very well aware that there's a couple of other things that you can look at, but this is only what I do because it's safer, easier to do, and cheaper to do, okay? So, because this is actually not enough, I'm actually gonna do this right in front of you right now in the camera. Okay, so right now, as, a, as you can see, I worked on this earlier. No. Oh, by the way, as I'm doing this, uh, I want you to note one thing. So, you see that there's the shape of this looks like a, um, looks like this, and then there's sort of like a slope like that, right? Now you see, you notice that there's like sort of like a corner there, a corner right here. Whatever you do, do not remove that, that sort of a corner, okay? Do not remove it. Now, the reason why if you remove it, if you, uh, is because your trigger bar will just slip over that area. Okay? If it slips over that area, sometimes it's just enough that your trigger does not engage. Okay, So if you file that off, your trigger will not pull. Your hammer will lock, but your trigger will not pull. You won't feel anything. It will just go slip. It will just do this. It will just go right here and just go, and it will just dive right under it like that. Okay, And nothing will happen. You, it must be enough that your trigger bar can hold it like this. Okay, I'm I'm simulating I'm simulating it in my hand. Okay, this is where people screw up a lot. So do this very very lightly. Try not to damage the sear. Okay, now after you do that, what I like to do is take a little bit of, uh, of light sandpaper and clean it up. Okay, a very piece of very, very worn piece of sandpaper. The reason why I have it very, very worn is so that I'm very, very gentle with it. Fold it a little bit and just clean up the rough edge. Now, uh, just to give you guys a heads up, if you decide to use aftermarket sears and aftermarket trigger bars, this will also work. However, okay, however, okay, certain situations you will feel like it's not working. Let me give you guys an example. If you guys use, if you guys, let's for example, if you buy an AIP hammer set that comes with a sear and all that stuff, it will be a very, very stiff trigger pull. The reason why is because there's a lot that you have to file off. If you have an AIP sear, you'll notice that that sear nub looks like this. Looks like a rectangular block with a rounded corners. Okay, it is really it gives you a really, really stiff trigger. Okay, if you buy the AIP ones, the AK the AKA ones are sort of similar. Uh, the UAC ones are pretty good. Um, the guns modify one is sort of a hit and miss um, because I did a review on the guns modify trigger bar. If you combine the guns modify trigger bar and the sear. Uh, sometimes it'll slip, sometimes it won't. Not to say that's bad, but it, like, I, I use it and it works, okay? But I'm just saying that, be careful, okay? Um, now, should you use stock Tokyo Murray parts, um, would, what would I recommend? I recommend you to use steel trigger bars or titanium coated trigger bar and a steel sear. The reason why is because it'll last longer. Uh, the reason why this sort of broke at the first place, now, oh, by the way, what happened earlier was that when there used to be a nub here, it made a uh, like a small dent on facing this side. There was a small dent. So what happened was his trigger bar 
was holding on to it. Okay? Now, now if you if you can see if you can if you actually know how your Glock works, you you already noticed one thing already. If this holds on to the sear, you will have a full auto issue. Okay? So that's the reason why this is important. Okay? That's the reason why he told me to restore it. Well, actually, I didn't explain that to him, but then that's the reason why. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Okay, so that's the reason why I'm modifying this right now for him. Okay, so that's good enough. It just has to be relatively shiny, that's all. Okay, that's pretty much it for the modifications, okay? Now, uh, after I assemble everything, I'm just going to test it just to see how it feels. Um, again, I don't have, I'm sorry guys, I don't have any way to gauge this for you, okay? I don't have any way to measure this for you. You're just going to have to take my word for it, okay? And after I do all the assembling and stuff, it will be the, um, the problem section of the video, which is the most important. You must watch that, okay? So, um, uh, which I, I already mentioned some of the problems, but you, if you want a collection of all the problems on paper, I'll go through it very detailedly with you. Okay? So let me just assemble everything. So first I like to assemble the hammer. Now the reason why I have to do this in front of you is because, um, you know, in case you guys suspect uh, that I'm playing with around the parts. Sorry if the camera suddenly dies, by the way, because um, it's not supposed. To, it's not a video camera. It's one of those cameras that you use for photos only. Okay, so I may have to suddenly cut off. So right now, just I can I can already sort of test this myself. Now here's here's a simulation for you, by the way. If you if you accidentally file that corner too much, this is what this is what will happen. Okay, it will just dive like that. Okay, the slope is too much, and it will just go vloop, and it will just slip. Okay, and that's and that's why sometimes when you have triggers that break or something like that, sometimes it's because that corner is gone, and then you will just have a your your hammer will cock, but then your trigger won't work. Okay, that's the reason why. It's because your 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 hook over here is slipping over the sear. Okay. The other reason is because this uh, there's another uh, there's another thing that can create this issue. The other way that that issue occurs is that if this was bent outwards like that, okay, if it's bent outwards like that, there is less surface area contact with that sear nub, okay. Anyways, okay, sorry about that. Um, the SD card ran out ran out of space. Okay, sorry. You're just gonna have to follow. I didn't change much. Okay, same same thing. I just put it in. Um, oh yeah, right. I'm just gonna keep working on it. So um, after this part, after I assemble everything and just test it, uh, I want to mention a couple of other things. Is your trigger, is your, your aftermarket trigger op options. Uh, believe it or not, uh, the after you know when I mentioned that the aftermarket trigger doesn't matter too much? It actually does matter a little bit. But the reason why is because um, if you're very concerned about how your trigger feels, um, sometimes if you use the flat face triggers, it makes it feel like it's lighter. It, it makes it feel like it's lighter. And it makes it feel like it's much shorter. Um, the reason why is because the way they're built, it looks like it's much uh, closer to. Oh, I haven't put in the trigger pin. Okay, it's meant to look. It's meant to look. Uh, you know what? I'll get. I'll get to it in a sec. Um, just after I assemble everything. Because um, a lot of people like to do this. Oh, by the way, a lot of people. If you guys are wondering why do people do this to their own Glocks, uh, why not just buy a sear? that gives you a very, very light trigger pull already, like a UAC sear. You know, it's much cheaper, uh, less fussy. Uh, why Why do this mod? Um, it's actually because there's actually a way to make this trigger so light that it feels like a high kappa trigger or a 1911 trigger. Um, because it sits so close to the wall that it looks like one. And it feels like one. So, uh, I'll show you guys in a second. That's actually what I did to this trigger. Um, because the guy insisted. Let me just align stuff. I hate doing this part. This requires...
Yeah, okay, sorry. I just don't... Because the, sear, uh, because the, the spring for the stupid slide release keeps falling off. Come on. Got, I got spoiled because of the Guns Mafi one. The extended magazine release for uh, the slide release for the Guns Mafi is um has it crimped, so I got too used to that. Whoops. Do this gently, by the way. Oh shit, I did too much. Oh, too much again. Sorry, I just... I just want the pin in the right position. Okay, anyways. So. So let me just do a function test with the slide on. All right. Ah, oh, yeah, silly me. I feel like a noob. Got to put the slide locker. Sorry for making this such a long video, but then there there are just so many issues that can occur. Okay, there we go. So it was even lighter than it was before. Now notice that that, her, that his trigger safety is like that. Uh, normally, by the way, if you have your market aftermarket trigger tucked all the way back like this, uh, your safety will look like this. Uh, the reason why I leave it out is because aesthetically, when you know when you pick it up, uh, normally a Glock has its safety sticking out. Um, so he wanted that, okay? And it, and it looks good with the same arms. I don't know uh, if he cares. Uh, I would say get a different trigger, but you know, I'm not, he's not that picky like me. Don't do this. Don't do this in your own home, just for safety reasons. Okay. Okay. I can trip it very easily. Okay. Uh, a lot of people sometimes describe this as a as a like a like a danger hole uh, trigger. Is that sometimes they feel like when they're carrying it, it will suddenly go off. Okay. Now, uh, let me see. What else do I have to say before I start with the problem section? Oh yeah, right. You know what I mentioned? Uh, I said that the trigger, aftermarket trigger, matters. Now, it's because you see the way it's all the way sitting back here. So right now, because I pull the trigger, you notice the trigger right now is actually touching the wall of the frame. Can you see it? It's actually touching the wall. So it makes it feel like it's incredibly short. That's the reason why people actually like this trigger, like this kind of style of triggering a lot, is because it feels like the trigger is only back here. Like, imagine I have a high kappa, only has the trigger like there, and you just basically spam it all day. Okay, uh, now he has to do a lot more slide work. I, I recommended him to change up the blowback housing unit, but he didn't change it. Um, he didn't ask me to, so that's why everything is stock, okay? So, so that's why I'm only doing the trigger job for now. Okay, so now let's get with the problem section. That will be a little bit more complicated. All right, guys, so welcome to the most tedious part of the video, the problem section, okay? Now, I consider this to be the most important part, but if you no longer care about it, you can just go ahead and skip the, over this part and just end the video, okay? Um, but I hope this helps you because 
this is a modification that a lot of people screw up on, okay? So that's the reason why I I have to show this, I have to mention it, because some people just, you know, like, I don't know, it's just important, okay? So anyways, uh, let's start by talking about the very first problem. The first problem is overdoing the sear nub, okay? So now, uh, let me just try to clear up some space. Sorry, I'm on, I'm on the edge of the table. Okay, so let me just align this for you. All these things for you, just to show. Okay, now, so this is an example of a lot of the sears that were unsuccessful. Um, these two, uh, these three actually, were unsuccessful. And I have a couple of sears uh, that are stock and not prepared, not modified, or anything like that. Okay. Now, let me describe a couple of things, uh, a couple of the problems for you. Now, as I mentioned before, if you round off that corner over there, what will happen is that your trigger bar will dive right under it. When it dives right under it, this is what it will happen. By the way, this is what it will look like in your own Glock. Now, imagine, uh, imagine uh, it will. Uh, okay, actually, I can I can do a better job. Let me see. Okay, so right now the hammer's cocked. The hammer's cocked right now, right? Okay, everything's functional. Now what will happen is that if that corner, if that corner over there is completely gone, this is what will happen. Okay, hammer's cocked, right? Now I'm simulating this with my hand. Okay, your trigger will just feel like this instead of like this. Okay, so that's what will happen. Okay, that's one of the first problems. Okay, now. The second prom. The second prom also has to do with the nub. Okay. Now the very first prom, as I mentioned before, has to do with the corner. This uh, the second prom has to do with how far you take that slope. If you overdo that slope, what will happen is that sometimes your trigger bar will touch it, will contact it. Sometimes it will slip again. Okay. So there are two things that can cause the slip: the trigger bar slipping under. One is that corner. Two is if you overdo the slope, okay? Now, what I recommend you to do is try to do it like the way I showed you earlier in the video, okay? That was, I don't, you can't really measure that angle because it's just way too small um, to measure it. What I recommend, how I'd recommend you to modify it is that, let's say you're holding your stock to a sear. Try to just file it down slowly and slowly and slowly until that slope becomes a little bit more distinctive, okay? That's what how I recommend you to do it, okay? So that's the second problem, okay? Okay, the third problem. The third problem is the trigger bar itself, okay? Now, uh, if you don't, um, I recommend you to watch my Guns Modify video because in there I actually mention an inherent problem that sometimes occurs with the Guns Modify trigger bar. Okay, and what that is is that on the on the trigger bar there is a hook, and you heard me mention this before. That hook contacts the sear. If that hook is bent outwards like this, it looks like this, right? Sometimes it gets bent outwards like this. Okay, now when that happens, it contacts the sear a little bit uh, less. Okay, and sometimes it can also wear out the sear. Like if the hook is normally like this, right, ends like this. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it can actually naturally create that corner. Sometimes it will enhance or round off that corner and it will also create two problems that trigger bar problem and the sear problem Okay, so this is something that you have to look out for yourself Normally your Glock should be already functioning normally. You don't have to check this. Okay Now to give you an example of trigger bars. I can give you a problem garter garter uh, uh, so, uh, Sometimes is a hit and miss garter for me works perfectly fine um, You do have to modify it a bit in my opinion that's my personal opinion, okay? Don't take me for that. I, I say you have to modify a little bit. Other people say that it's durable, it's the best trigger bar I've ever used, okay? So I'm just telling you that that's the difference in opinion here, okay? Uh, another example of a trigger bar that can mess it up is the SA trigger bar. If you don't know what that is, the SA trigger bar is a competition trigger bar. It is a trigger bar that has this adjustment for the screw on the trigger bar itself, it is a very rare part. It is a part that I actually sold off a long time ago. 
is because back when I bought it, I misused it, and then, and then I, I said I didn't like it. I said it didn't work, but in reality, it does work. I just don't have it anymore. Um, it does work sometimes. Sometimes, okay? Um, I actually need to buy that again to confirm for you guys. But I'm just telling you the SA trigger bar is something to look up for, okay? Guns modified trigger bar. Yes, it can definitely cause that problem, but only sometimes. It's uh, uh, for, certain, for certain pistols, yes. It also depends on your sear, okay? Now, what I mean by this... Just give me a second. Uh, let me find a stock Tokyo Marie sear. Okay, I don't have one to show you right now, but basically look at this for a second. So you see, you so you see that nub right there. Now, if you notice, if you're if you know your Glock parts very well, the height of the sear nub, how tall it is, it's different compared to the stock Tokyo Murray one. The stock Tokyo Murray one is a little bit taller, while this one is shorter. Now, what that means is that you have less to work with. Okay, and this also means that. If you choose to use a guns modified sear to do this trigger job on, it's a little trickier. You can mess it up, okay? But you also notice another thing that the slope is actually a little bit more visible on the start on, on the guns modified one. Okay? And the other thing that's better is that it is actually more durable. That I can I can tell you because I've been using it for a long time and the guns modified parts hold up very very well. The only part that I hate is that guns modify for some clear reason. Their their rotor sucks. I don't know. I don't know why they don't upgrade it. But anyways, I'm just letting you know that that sometimes certain sears, their nub shapes are different height and different shape. The AIP one is just a big solid block that hates you. The AKA one is a little bit better. The Star Trek Humiri one is fine. This one is too short. Um, it sometimes works with certain trigger bars. Um, the UAC one works perfectly fine. Um, I have a UAC one here actually. Wait. It is on this one. Oh, shut up. Don't, don't fall. Don't fall. I have a UAC one right here. Can you see? Contacts it very fine. As you can see, the sear is moving. You see it? It's actually moving. Didn't no modifications, no fitment. It drops in right perfectly fine. And it does make your trigger trigger pull a little bit lighter. Um, but only a little bit. I won't say it's by that much. It is better, but not that much better. Okay. Uh, let me see. Guns modify, as I mentioned before, works perfectly fine. Uh, oh, and certain different other trigger bars. This also applies to the Glock 18s. This is a Glock 18. You notice the trigger bar is different, okay? But it's the same concept, okay? Exactly the same concept can also be applied. And, oh yeah, this was the stock Tokyo Marine one. And that's, that's pretty much it. This is pretty much all for Prom 3. Uh, and now we're on to the fourth problem, okay? Now, the fourth problem has to do with the reset, okay? Now, okay, notice that that reset is actually audible and clickable, okay? Now, if you do, if you do not hear your reset, okay, that means that you did it, uh, like the amount of modification that you did to your sear, you almost overdid it. Okay, now the reason why uh, that how that works is that because when your sear slope is too steep, what happens is that it just slides right under it and just softly goes back into its place like this. Normally, you can hear that. Yeah, you know how this, like you know that sound that comes off the Glock when you do this. It's normally very audible. You can even feel it. You can feel it and you can hear it. But if you can, but if you actually release your trigger like this and you barely hear it that means that it's on the verge of not working but it does work okay that's not really a problem but then the thing is in the future it can cause problems in the future what that means is that your sear might wear out the second that your sear starts wearing out that problem will your problem of um uh, of your trigger bar not engaging the sear will happen okay now uh the fifth problem the fifth problem is also sort of has a problem with this system is that what happens is that if you let's say if you're too rough with your with the way you do your files like you know this file that I have ha, sorry this file that I have right here I bought it specifically to modify my sears if you decide to overdo your sear with like a dremel like god knows why you would you would use a dremel to do this because that's over that's way overkill um 
what will happen is that sometimes you will actually uh, damage the sear in a way unexpectedly. And what will happen is that your trigger bar will actually sometimes uh, knock parts of the bits of the metal off. Okay? If you don't know what I mean, for example, um, a Star Tokyo Marie trigger bar and a Star Tokyo Marie sear, over time they sort of break, right? It's sort of like that. But uh, but a but a um, like a artificial version, like you you basically accidentally caused it to do that. Okay, so what uh, what that means is that basically that sear will 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 get dented. If it gets dented, what happens is that your trigger bar will hold onto it. Okay, so wait, just look in here. So you see the way the trigger bar is holding it, holding onto it right now. Basically, it'll hold onto it like that. And what happens is that your hammer will not lock. See, it won't lock, and your Glock will go full auto, okay? This is the reason why the full auto issue happens, by the way. If you're having a full auto issue, it's either your hammer's not getting cocked, or your sear is not is being held, okay? That, and that is all the problems that can possibly occur by doing this modification. So, I hope this video was helpful to you. I'm really sorry for making this a long video, but I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. I also have a Facebook page that you can follow me on. Peace, guys. Happy shooting.